This video demonstrates how to use multiple devices at the finish line, sharing the task of recording times for racers using a new feature called Master Helper Timing Mode. In this example, we will use two devices, but note that there is no upper limit. For a pool swimming event, you'd use eight devices, one per lane. For our simple race, we will create our start list on the app. For a bigger race, you would post a start list off the WebScore website via file upload, and then download it to the app. Our race name is WebScore 5K with a mass start, and everyone will be completing the same course. Note that you could be timing a multi-distance race with laps with the Master Helper timing mode, and the setup steps would otherwise be identical. To keep this short, we will we'll use just a name and bib number for our racers. Our race will utilize manual timing, so we will skip over the hardware setup. Note that you could use multiple devices, each recording bibs or chips using a scanner or a chip reader, to scale a busy finish where you do use hardware to help automate the recording of times. We've previously entered our participant names to the name list, so we will save some time by selecting the racers rather than typing the names in again. To assign bibs, we will use the automated bib assignment tool. The first bib number is 1. If we were timing this race with just one device, we would now be done setting up the race. To use multiple devices, we will tap the Timing Mode option. Next, we will turn the option to use multiple devices on. This first device will act as a master, and we will be passing the timing data between the devices via WebScore.com. This option allows you to mix dissimilar devices, such as an iPad with an Android phone. When using Bluetooth, the devices must all be the same type, either all iOS and Mac, or all Android and Windows. Next, we will select to sync all timing data back to the helper device. This is useful to avoid recording the same racer on both devices, and will also give you a complete backup on both devices in case there's an issue with one device, or one operator, during the race. If you're concerned that the operator of the helper device will be distracted by getting automatic updates from the other device to appear on the screen, you can choose to not sync the data back to the helper device. We're now complete with the setup for the master device. Next, let's share the start list with the helper device. We will tap the Post Start List toolbar button and post the start list to the WebScore website. We will need to pick a sport. Our event is a running race. Next, let's switch to our helper device and download the start list we just posted. The app will notice that this is a master helper race and will skip over the config panels and take you directly to the timing mode panel to select the role for this device. We will select the default helper and we're now done with the setup on both devices. Let's navigate to the Race Start panel and start the race. First, we will activate the master. And on the helper device, we will connect to the master. If you don't have internet connectivity at the race site, or you use devices that don't have internet access, you'd choose the Bluetooth method of sharing the data between the devices. Next, the master will start the race on both devices. 
We were a bit late getting the final setup done. The racers have already been running for 15 minutes. So we will use a race clock adjustment to set the race clock forward by 15 minutes. If you want to post live results, you'd set live results equals on on the master device. Okay, let's get ready to receive our runners at the finish line. We will start the race clocks with the 15 minute adjustment. Next, we will switch to fast tap view to show the timing data is synced automatically between the devices. You could remain in the simpler normal view when timing the race, where you tap the racer box on the screen to record both the time and the number. We will now tap times and bibs for our incoming runners. Each device will record a few and you'll notice how the timing data automatically appears on the other device. If an error correction needs to be made, that must be done on the master device as the edited timing data will not be resent to the master. One of our racers had some trouble along the way and decided not to finish. We'll mark that racer as DNF. We're now done with the race. We will finish the race on the master device by tapping race control, finish race, and we will choose to end the race on all devices. This concludes this demonstration of how to time a race with multiple devices using the master helper timing mode. If you have any questions, you can always reach us via email at support at webscore.com.